we'll see how this recording works. Um, yeah, so we're in learning plan one, and I will make that correction because we are using uh, CS6 as our base program we're using, the Photoshop CS6. Um, so for our activities, the introduction activity, so pointing out that just introduce yourself in the discussion. Yeah, we got people done that. That's good. So we got people coming in. Um, our assessments. I'm going to try to break out and let you know what pages to read. So the first one, read pages 1 to 21, talks about the interface and opening files of Photoshop. So... You said you're pretty familiar with it right now, then, with opening files in uh, Bridge? Uh, right, yeah. I, I uh, had some work, you know, experience with the Bridge, and uh, fairly comfortable with that, uh, you know, navigate my way around with that. Probably more stuff I'd be able to learn in there, I'm, I'm guessing. Uh, I'm, I just realize there's shortcuts and things like that that I need to learn. Yeah, and, and you always, the more you do, the more those those will come in. To know them and use them. Um, it did have file open here, so you can open a file through file open, navigate in your computer where you have um, the different um, files that you want to get at. So if I go to our lesson files, you can open them here. Um, you could also open things from uh, the bridge, which you said you know how to do is open from bridge, browse and bridge. Uh, let's see if I have bridge open. Yeah, I do. So you could browse bridge and find um, where you want to go here. I can go to documents and then I have my, my, so it depends how you have folders. So I always try to tell the students to try to stay as organized as you can with your folder structure. Um, it's not easier in yes. the classroom, but here we just, I try to, um, organize, um, I got my miscellaneous stuff, more my personal files and then the, the school files and then the different ways, um, they show up there. So I got my fall folders, my spring folders to all the different classes. Yeah, I did it a little bit different. Uh, I normally keep all the files in each course, but then I uh, had a folder called Adobe, so I uh, in my document file, so I just used that, and uh, I uh, have my uh, all the all the lessons in there, and I just go through from there. Okay, and and that works. You know, it just as long as you can figure it out. Because you start building up and making more and more files. It's like, okay, now where do I have that one? Not that you're always going to find it as easy as you, you want, but. Uh, um, nothing, nothing worse than that being able to find something that you don't know where you put it. <laughs> yeah, and that's where we're going. So I have my. Um, that's from the book, the lesson files. Lesson one, and then they just show up here. So that's, um, let's see if I can open up this one. We're going to look at and double click in it. Computer's going a little slow, but it will open up. And you have multiple tabs open, as you know, in Photoshop. So that along the top, I have the tabs of the different files I've opened. What's uh, new is the mini bridge. Um, you can open things in mini bridge as long as bridge is open. If it's not open, it will prompt you to open bridge. But down at the bottom on the CS6, so on the, you're, you're working with CS5. Do you have the uh, choice for mini bridge on there? No, I have to, uh, I think I've normally taken it down from the menu. Uh, I don't think I have the tab at the corner, at the lower corner for the mini bridge. Okay. Yeah, that, okay. That's one of the new things in CS6 and. Um, and it, it is new there. So if you double click on it, if you ever do work on the Macs or any of the other ones, you can open it up mini bridge and the navigation goes along the side or here and you can locate your files and see them within your Photoshop 
thing. So if I go to here. Here, spring classes, Photoshop. And then I, so I want, and the long top kind of shows me where I am in the spring, my spring MPTC folder, beginning Photoshop, classroom in the book DVDs, the lesson, lesson one. And you can see them here. So I could go here. If I select it, if I hit my space bar, it will go larger. I could see what the image looks like at larger. Hit space bar again. It shrinks it down. And then if I want to open this start image, I can uh, go with open in Photoshop. So I have the, the start image there. Want to shrink this down, I will just double click on the mini bridge. So they're actually... Uh, there are DVD. Have you seen any of the videos that came along with the book? Uh, yes, I, yes, I did. Yeah. Okay, so they go through that and some other things. They don't, not everything in the book. They don't go through everything, but there's some good things there. You work with Photoshop, you'll see there's tons of online stuff also. And then if you still have uh, Lynda.com for any of your other classes. No, I uh, I canceled that. I had it uh, for the whole time I was here, and I just uh, just canceled it last semester. Okay, They're just checking because once you do have it, you could use any any of their tutorials. So there's tons of Photoshop stuff there also, but that's not a prerequisite for this course. I was just pointing out as an option. Okay, yeah, I was just uh, <clears throat> kind of holding my breath for that. It was because uh, I had to reactivate it last year. Uh, last semester is for one course, and uh, it was like that last semester cost, cost me a fortune with all this extra, extra stuff I had to buy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, 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 Lynda.com works well if you're using it in multiple courses. It's expensive if it's just one course, yeah, especially if we didn't use it regularly. It was like every few weeks we were using it for a half hour or something. I thought, man, this is a waste, <laughs> yeah. But and that, and that's why I was just pointing this out because. For that reason, if you have it, then you can look at anything that's on there. Um, you don't have to look at just what it's assigned to you. All right. No no worries there. Um, so I was just going to go through. Um, so those are ways to open a file. And once they're open, we have the tabs. We can look at them in tabs here <clears throat> along the top. Um, there's different ways you can view um arrange your different windows to tile vertically um say if i want to do uh, tile all vertically i can see them all set up like this um, to horizontal So you, you could look at it in different ways, but the, the default way is to consolidate all tabs. Okay, consolidate all tabs. Okay. Yeah, so that will bring you back to the default way where we have all our tabs along the top, which uh -huh. is um, a nice way to work. Then you just click on them just to see the different ones. And you, you can rearrange these, so I can pull this one over here. Um, let's see, I'll bring this one actually back over here. And yes. look, look between the two files. Um, down here, we can check our zooms. Now, um, one of the features of for zooming, do you have a scroll wheel or mouse? Do you work with a mouse? No, I don't. I just uh, have a uh, finger uh, mouse on my laptop. Okay. So you just use the uh, the, the pad. Right. Okay. I've just been so used to using a mouse and uh, I'm just smiling, you know, saying that like that because when I go to help other students and like, where's your mouse? <laughs> it makes it easier. I can show you how to do this easier if you had a mouse. But so that's fine. I was going to say in the preferences, you could uh, set. Um, are you using a Mac or a PC? Uh, PC. Okay. So it should be in a file. I think file preferences for the PC. 
but you can set different preferences. Um, one of them is scroll with the zoom with the um, zoom with the scroll wheel on your mouse. If you had that. Okay. Um, you I kind of like that one I just uh, discovered playing around today was the one where you drag it to the right and then it uh, uh, make, zooms it in and then you drag it back to the left and then it zooms it out. I, I, I kind of like that one. I just discovered that uh, this morning. Yeah, that that's good too. We have that option. Is that on the uh, checkboard, the checkbox, or is that oh, just... Uh, that is dynamic. Um, I'm not seeing that one in here. Oh, I know what that was. Uh, there's a checkbox at the top. Uh, it says something. I forget what it was. And then you... And then that's that affects it. <clears throat> uh, if I get this open... Oh. That one. Scrubby zoom. Oh yeah, scrubby zoom. Scrubby zoom yeah. is it? So you just screw them. In. Yeah, when you're when you have the um, zoom tool um, activated, then you can do that. Yeah, that is nice. I might uh, get spoiled using that. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it makes it quicker um, as you're going through. So our tools, um, you're familiar with that, and no one else has come in, so I'm just it's just you and I, Patrick. But I'll just go yeah. through. You know, you have your tools on the left-hand side. If you're familiar with most of them, and you know that there are tools that are nested within each other. Uh-huh. And um, so you, when you have a little uh, – triangle like this in the lower right hand corner you know there's options of other tools so just click on them and you can choose what you want so any any of the tools that have that triangle there's um different tools in there to use Our healing tools brush and pencil yeah so these are more your raster tools going through here and then we um photoshop does have uh, ability to do vector art have you worked with illustrator or anything no i haven't okay so photoshop is uh, what we would call um, a raster art a pixel based program where we're manipulating the pixels and and changing them um, vector art is a series of lines and points mathematic way of things of doing it that's my artistic way of explaining it um, but so you're not really dealing with pixels, you're dealing with the lines and points so you can scale and, and move things without losing the resolution. That's vector art. And Photoshop does have some vector art, um, options in these lower tools, the pen tool type is a vector based and then these line tools and, um, different selection for paths, uh, these lower tools there. The so hand the, tool. The main, the main way it uh, drives that the, drives the system for Photoshop is by pixels, then, right? I mean, that's the main system for how it uh, operates. Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, it, it, it's that's the main system for it. That's the main purpose of Photoshop is really pixels. Photographs are all made up of pixels, um, but it does have the vector options for integrating with uh, Illustrator and other vector programs. And using, and we will, when we start doing selecting, we can select using the pen tool, and you can get some pretty accurate selections uh, by drawing with the pen tool and then converting them into selections. But that's later on as we get into it. Okay, well, we those tools there. Uh, shrink this up a little bit. Or let's do this. So on page 11, I go through the official names of the interface um, or options bar. So if we do select a tool. You have your choices of ways to work with a tool. If you want, this is a selection tool. Um, I can feather my selection. I can have my selection um, be anti-aliased. Um, actually, not with the rectangle, but the anti-alias um, are you familiar with that term 
No, I'm not. So anti-alias is when pixels kind of blend together um, to try to match the, their colors as closely as possible with the color next to it. Hmm. So if we zoom up, like using our zoom tool, um, hit, you can use the shortcut for Z and zoom up. The colors kind of blend in here, this blur of colors where you got the black mixing with the white and you got some grays and things going on in there. That's um, anti alias and I don't know what too far. Um, there's some art things and a lot of it's in like a computer games where they want to have the hard edges and they want to, um, they don't want that blending of colors. They might be limited to, to the amount of colors they can use within a, a computer game. And so that at those times you might turn off the anti-alias, but for the most part, 99% of the time you work with Photoshop, you're going to be working in anti-alias mode. Alias huh. means that the colors meet each other and they, um, they butt right up to each other. So one way to see that if I use my pencil tool here and I draw pixels, there with my pencil tool, I got the straight pixels. If I use my brush tool, you can see mm -hmm. how it blurs and automatically puts an anti-alias on there. Hmm. So that would be anti-alias where the white and the black are kind of blending together there. And alias is the just the white straight against the black in pixels. Okay, I see. Um, and just another thing to, to undo is command Z will undo. And if I hold Command Z and Alt, oh, Command Z and Alt, then I can undo multiple strokes. Um, so Command Z undoes, Command D, Command plus Alt and Z will do multiple. I zoomed in on this picture really far. If I if I double click on my um, magnifying glass, it will bring it back to a hundred percent. I know I'm at 100%. It tells me down here in the lower left. And I have my scroll wheel set up, or I've had this, I can bring it back. And it centers it for me. One way to navigate around a picture is to hold your space bar. If you hold the space bar, you'll get that hand tool. And you can drag around there so that's one way of instead of having to just click on the hand tool here your space bar creates that hand tool and you can move around huh. which makes it easy if you're working okay, so the space bar just the space yeah. bar creates a hand tool that huh just hit the space bar yes yeah you see that i don't know if you have yours open or not or yeah this is kind of difficult i guess to see if you if, if you're able to see what I'm doing and and work out what you're doing, yeah, I uh, <clears throat> opened up it just a few minutes ago. Okay. And, uh, yeah, let's see how this goes. That's as I was setting this up, I thought about that after the fact. It's like, well, this would be kind of hard to watch me and and not try it themselves. Yeah, it wouldn't be where. Uh, you can uh, do stuff while you're watching. Um, I mean, I probably could. I got the window back and forth, but I know every time I try to do something that when somebody showed it to me, I'm, I'm losing like three or four steps while I'm doing it. <laughs> right. Yeah. So what we'll see. What how, you know, I'll keep you informed whether I'm going to keep doing it. Like depends on if anyone else uh, shows up. But uh, I'll do it next week, and uh, we'll just see who shows up then. And maybe they'll have more questions after trying it. Uh, but yeah, it's just showing these these little tips. Hopefully they'll help um, in the interface. Then, so on this side, we have our color um, choices. Um, we are working uh, for the most part in RGB colors. RGB is more screen colors, so that's um, how screens see colors. It's a mix between red, green, and blue, and the colors we see on the screen are some variations of those. And and that's different from print. When we work in print, we work in CMYK. It was uh, cyan, uh, magenta, yellow, and the K stands for black. Um, and that's what the print 
form, we can go into image mode. And we're getting, I'm getting a little advanced here. We're not going to do it there. But that is one where you can, you can change whether you're going to work in CMYK color or RGB color. Um, the default, I think, is the RGB color, or maybe because this image opened up to this, that's where it is, that this is an RGB image. But most things that are going to appear on a screen, whether you're working in, um, like, the JPEGs um, or RGB, if you're doing any work for video or movies, that's all RGB because it appears on a screen. Things that are going to go to print are going to the CMYK print colors. What does that CMYK stand for? Um, cyan, uh, yellow, or c cyan, magenta, yellow, CMY, and K stands for black. So cyan is a blue, um, magenta is the reddish tones, the yellows, and then uh, the black tones. Okay, because I put in my uh, colors on my websites and I use a uh, six uh, character combination of letters and numbers. Is that considered CMYK? No, that's, those are the web colors. And um, those are, uh, Photoshop works with those also. So right here, they're, we're working in here. Let's see where, um, that's not even index color. That's, um, You know, those are for the web where we could do it, uh, where, where we could access those uh, numbers if you wanted to use those colors. If we double click here, you could type in those numbers here. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you could type in your web numbers um, down there. Um, you know, being white is FFF, is uh, black is 0000. zero, zero, zero. Okay, and, good. And, and then you could compare whatever, what the RGB equivalent will show up here. And you see MYK will show up there. So I, I got to this um, by double clicking on my color swatches down down here. This is what we okay. call a for, foreground color and a background color. So you can have two colors kind of loaded up um, at a time. Um, right now it's black and white. If I want to start picking colors, I would hit the hue, which is H. Um, Saturation, saturation and brightness are these HSB ones here. But if I hit the U, then I can start picking colors and my new color will show here. And as I click around in this field, these numbers are changing, these numbers are changing. So they're all changing um, depending on what mode you're reading that color in. Yeah, I'll have to. I fumble, I fumble a little around, a little bit around through this window. I definitely will need some to learn some more about this, this yeah. window. We'll get more into it, but I just just to just get an idea of what's going on um, with it uh, and the RGB, the CMYK, and then the web. There is a, a more a proper name that I have to refresh myself on that. Yeah, I probably knew I, I refer to them as web colors. Um, but there is another name on that. I, I know there is. If I know if you say it, I'll say, ah, okay, that's what it was. Yeah, that, me too. I, I apologize for that. that. <laughs> no one that right offhand. But those numbers, um, yeah. So you'll be given, you know, whether you work with some different clients, they'll give you those numbers, they'll give you RGB numbers, they'll give you CMYK, um, and then you can put them in to match what you need. Um. So yeah, we have our colors, our swatches. You can pick your, your swatch colors here. As I select here, it will select my foreground color. So it will change this foreground color as I select through these swatches. Um, is, that, is, that just from hitting, is that just from hitting the uh, foreground uh, 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 box? And then you can hit that? Is that how you uh, get that? You have to hit the box? The foreground box first before you get the swatch colors. No, um, and the colors, I, I, you have the, you have these sliders here, and they're they're gonna change um, your foreground or background colors. Let's see in here. This is gonna change my background, so I selected it in here. 
with my foreground selected here, my background selected here. Oh, okay, I see. And, yeah. and they're changing them there. Uh, I see. That's that's in our my color um, tab, in the swatches tab. Um, what's going to happen is it, it's going to change the um, okay whatever one selected in here. So I select my foreground or or background. It's going to change whichever one is selected in here. Generally, uh, I will deal with uh, just dealing with here. You could switch between these by hitting this arrow. This is showing back and forth. Um, what I like to do, the shortcut key, because there are times when you're working with two colors and you're with something you're doing, you want to work between two specific colors. If you use your X key, that does the switching of what's your foreground, what's your... Um, background color your tools are going to pull from your foreground color so if i'm painting let's let's pick something that's a little bit different when you're like a red in there so if i am painting on on this layer um it's going to do whatever the foreground color is and uh, and i'm switching between these colors by just hitting the x key okay and and you can manually just like photoshop and on most of all the Adobe products, there's more than one way to do the same thing with a shortcut key, um, you know, sometimes pulling down from the menu or here. In this case, doing that. But instead of clicking, I like just using the X key there. To default back to black and white, you would choose this icon here in the left. If I click that, then I'm back to my default black and white colors. <clears throat> So I, I did show you that you could um, delete those by doing um, Option Command Z. I'll take the two of those out if I want to redo. Um, Shift Command Z. Yeah, Shift Command Z can redo if I made mistakes. Um, what I could also use, you have your History tab, um, is up here in the um, upper right. And you can go step back in history or step forward. Um, the only thing about doing here, if I do step back and I do another move, I'll, I'll lose that last move I did. Um, but usually, by the time you're doing it, it's not a big deal. So I went back to open. So anything I, it's reverted back to where it was when I opened the file. Uh -huh. So a different way. So the default in Photoshop is really just a Command Z, and it's like some programs you can hit Command Z, Command Z, and keep stepping back. Photoshop doesn't work that way. You have to hit the um, Alt Command Z, Alt Command Z to step back in your steps. Shift Command Z will step you forward if you want to go back. You went back too far, and then you also have the option of using your History tab. And it has that the uh, <clears throat> control uh, D for uh, the PC that'll delete it, and then do I hit alternate control D to bring that back? Um, to delete, uh, if you made a like a, a like a, mis a drawing mistake like this, yeah, that's control D with that, then it, that gets rid of it, and then uh, control you know, Z as in zebra, control, control Z, okay. Control yeah. D, uh, does that just get rid of it completely? So if I hit Control D or? No, Control D um, is a reserved for um, selection, which we're going to work go to next. Okay. Um, so if you make a selection of an area, um, the Control D will deselect. I see. And uh, I, I apologize for that, Patrick. I will try to keep uh, to mention the uh, PC commands. But so if I would do control uh, Z to delete a step or alt control Z will delete. To, to bring it back again, huh? <laughs> All right, to bring it back, I would do shift control Z. Shift, yeah, okay, shift control Z, yeah. That, that re reduces, and, and you could also go into edit. Um, just un undo. undo. Yeah change 
Then you got the shortcut up there too. We'll go, um, and then step backwards is the same as going. Yeah, right. The shortcut keys are here. Uh -huh. And if you want it quicker, you go to open state, and then you have it there. Um, one other thing I was going to point out, the book points out, is uh, your workspace. Uh, we're working in essentials. Um, if something does get mixed up, you can always reset the essentials. Um, you move things around, and you want to get back to where you are. You, so, um, yeah, it says something there about resetting the appearance uh, every time you do a lesson. It says, uh, yeah, they they try to do that in case you move things around because they are going to show you how you can move things and add things and change to different um, things because you have the three D workspace motion painting photography um, so go to essentials and then hit reset essentials that way uh, whatever they're showing you in the book um, your interface will look what they're talking about match what they're showing you that's why do I just uh, do I just do the interface uh, reset or because I have uh, like my preferences and it's got interface along with about eight other different uh, things to reset I think uh, and so if I just, because uh, it's got performance, file handling, transparency, units and rulers, guides, plugins, types, so I, I would just hit preferences and then just interface, right? And then. Yeah, well, then you just, know what? You might not want to do that if you change something there. And they probably want to, I think what they're asking if you come into your uh, workspace. You if see? you're doing something. Uh, like uh, moving something around, and then that's yeah. Like you could take these layers. Say if I took my layer out, uh, let me come back to it, and I can drag this over here. I could redock this um, in a different spot. I don't know where if I wanted to put it in here, and then my layers show up on the side. Um, so you can move things around and redock them by grabbing it. I can have it free floating. Um, if you're working on a laptop and you want to use an external monitor to have dual screens to work with you could put some things in one monitor and some in another so that's where it becomes handy to redock things and move them around yeah, i've seen students do that i was looking at that and i said i don't think so <laughs> yeah so I mean, it depends on what kind of artwork you're doing and how much space you need um, but that is that's an option but so you say you did all this and i want to get back to where i started i'm like I, where you know i'm not in this with the book which suggests is go to window workspace and then reset essentials oh okay window all right and if i click that then it's back to the default um setup of the workspace okay yeah right now mine's uh has essentials and it's on the default and uh oh reset essentials i see it you see okay. i see it the PC or in CS5 might be a little different, but it, it should be in there under workspace. Yeah, the, the under reset essentials. Okay, I see it. Yeah. That was in the uh, wrong uh, menu on top. Uh, I, was, I thought I was resetting it, but I really wasn't because uh, I went over to edit and went to preferences. And I, I should have been over in the window. Manual. Yeah, mostly the preferences you'll set up, and if you're the only one using your computer and, and the program, then there's something that things that you like. You know, you can change them if you want, and you can, and you can reset them if you change them too much and you're not sure where you want to be. But um, you, you, yeah, most of the time, you just you want to just reset the workspace. But it, since we have the windows open, there's all different uh, windows you can open. If they're not like the history window right now, it's not open, but that's what I was showing you earlier. If I click on that, it will pop it out. That in the essentials is nested in there. Um, the pro these are properties for my adjustment layers, my history. And as you scroll over things, it will tell you what they are, properties there. So I was going through here, these... Um, <clears throat> Make sure I got the official names for these tabs here. Well, we have these um, 
window tabs, I would call this this row here, and the default for his history there. Another one that uh, we use um, certain times are actions, and then that pops up. So you can place different things in these tabs. They're handy when they're here, so if you want to pull on them, they're right here. You can click on them and then close them up, and they're out of your way. So we have our color swatches in here. Um, picking our RGB colors. You can change. Now these we call our menus for the different uh, tabs are up here in the upper right of the different tabs. So this menu um, you can change to HSB slider with hue, saturation, and brightness sliders. Let's see the web oh, yeah, I see web. Yeah, I see web color sliders in there too. Yeah. So here's our numbers. So here's your red numbers, your green numbers, and your uh, your bl um, blues. So yeah, if we bring them all down to zero, then we'll be down to black. So these would these would correspond with the six numbers you were talking about. Okay. Yeah, so that's why I call them web colors. So they, yeah, they call them web colors too. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I heard a different name for them somewhere else, though. So, um, yeah, I, I thought I did too. I, yeah, like, I think they're raised. The um, but that's how I kind of refer to them as the web colors. So those are there. So you got a lab sliders. I'm actually not really sure um, what these ones are. I haven't used this 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 before. Um, Never heard of them. Uh, I, but RGB is pretty much screen colors. You're going to use CMYK is your paint. And then your web colors. And other choices in here. We'll get into more of the colors, but just knowing that each each of these um, menus up here for our adjustments, there's there's different choices you can um, pick. This is another way of activating the um, adjustment layers. And we'll get into that in a second. So these are our adjustment layers in the default space, um, the different styles. If you want to work with these, we'll get into these in a later lesson. Adjustments, then we have our layers, our channels. Um, these are RGB channels and our paths. The paths are working in that vector paths is a, a vector term of uh, those points and, and lines that i was talking about so you can draw in paths and then you convert it into selection so you can get um pretty accurate uh selections by drawing that way but that's what that tab will be for will, will we be doing that or uh i i think or... so when we get into chapter seven i think or lesson seven uh in in the book um we're going to be selecting, getting, trying to get some fine tune our selections. Use the pen tool to do some selecting. So we'll see how that works. And you got, you convert things from paths to um, selections. Um, so we'll see how that works. And then our layers are here. Um, and our layers. Here we have our um, it's my background layer, so it it's locked. And to unlock them, um, I would double click on it. It says new layer, but if it turns to layer zero, say OK, then it's unlocked, and then I can change things. These are blending modes, how it blends with the layer above it or below it, um, our opacity is here uh, our fill if we want to lock it again I would do not lock it there making a quick mask So we'll get into what these are a little, little later, but um, the blending modes are ones that we use, we'll use pretty often. And then our different layers. To add a new layer, 
we come down to the bottom. We can you know, create a new layer with that icon. We can organize our, our layers into folders. If we get multiple stuff going on and we want to get organized so we can create a folder or a group and then keep layers within that. Again, I'm not going to get too far ahead here, just pointing out the different things that we have on here. Um, uh -huh. <clears throat> a, a new adjustment layer. Um, add a layer, a layer mask. We'll get into those. Into um, effects, different layer styles we could choose. And if we want to link a couple of layers together, we also have cho things here to choose what we could do. Our blending options, convert to smart object. We'll get into that. Flatten image and different things we want to do. Um, you have those choices in there. Just basic, uh, basic layout for the panel and everything, huh? Yeah. Just to give an idea of how everything looks and how it works. And... Uh, yes. So uh, the key thing, and then we'll get into that to a, a later chapter, but what works so nice in Photoshop, the little bit that you might have worked on it, is being able to work in layers and manipulate things in different layers to make a composited, composited image. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, what, how you can do the adjustments to the layers and affect them. Um, so we're zoomed in on this. I think uh, going into that first lesson, um, the only thing I was going to point out is, uh, you know, maybe... Uh, you know, you, you know about the tools being hidden. So what they wanted us to want us to do in this first lesson is to with the Z key, zoom it back out. I'm just scrolling it back. They wanted to let me see which one. This is the end image and the start image. So that's a 20%. I'll make this a 20. So when I compare them, they're the same. So that what I did, I could type in any percent I want down here. Oh, okay. And so, and then this one's at twenty. So by doing this, I can compare them. Can you see my screen? Yeah. So it, it's a slight difference. This is a start. Everything's a little bit darker, and then this one they brightened up the highlights a little bit. So looking at these uh -huh. highlights and this highlight. It's subtle. Um, yeah, you never never know unless you compare them. <laughs> right. Um, and really what they're kind of going into is the, the selection part and introducing us to adjustment layers. And adjustment layers are a way that we can make changes to the image without really affecting the pixels um, of our image. So the way that works nice, we could turn off the adjustment and look at it and turn it back on so we could do that comparison that I'm doing right here. But we could do that uh, within the layers here. So the first thing they wanted us to do, uh, by, okay, I have my magnifying glass selected, and the quick key for that is Z. But I can zoom up. And what they wanted us to do here um, is to select that headlight so we'll leave the headlight alone and then we're going to adjust all the highlights outside of the headlight so we're using the selection tool um, this is our marquee tools I, I i tend to call it selection tool but we have our marquee the default is the rectangular marquee and we want to go to the oval marquee and we want to draw the ellipse to match the uh, the interior of the headlight here. One way to do it is just to draw it and try to match it up. But the hard part about this is um, that once we have it, then we can take it and move it around, but we can't come back and really adjust it um, in there. Pull it up when the can you know move in the image. These two, let's see, get out of there. 
So once you draw it, it's harder to get it to manipulate this outside thing. So one way to, to do that, if I selected, um, I did select here, drew this ellipse. And once it's selected, if I go into the interior of the ellipse, then I can move it. And it's almost there. It's a little bit off. Um, what I want to try to do is try to get it right on the inside of the rim here of the headlight. It's not a true circle, but one of the things the book does point out to us to do. Um, there's two ways to deselect. You had mentioned before Command D or Control uh, right. Control yeah, D. Uh, control D, right? Control D will deselect. So if you do Control D, it deselects. Or if you have a selection there, if I select outside of that selection on my image, that will deselect also. So what the book was showing us, if we do um, shift and drag, then I'll, I'll make a perfect circle. So that will constrain, um, carry away there. Um, that will constrain my shape to be a perfect circle by holding the shift key. The other thing they were showing us is if we want to drag out from the center, then you would hold your Alt key. So Alt and Shift would make a circle. So I start to drag and I hit the Alt key and the Shift key. Then I'm going to make a perfect circle coming from the center where I started to drag. And I can kind of look at this to, to guess where I want it to be about there. And then move that. And it's still a little bit off here. Um, so it's not really a true circle and that's where, uh -huh. um, it becomes hard. So what I was doing with it, just experimenting was using just the alt key and trying to draw it out and then moving my selection around. So to deselect that and it'd take a, one, a couple times to do it maybe, but I'm going to select here and then hold my alt key and select outward. And then as I'm doing this, I can change my shape because I'm not holding the shift key now. So to pull it out. Let me get there. And it's still not the exact center, but what I'm going to do is take that and move it over a little bit. And... Well, as good as you'll get it, I guess, huh? Yeah, it is about like that. Now, if I, if I wanted to change the size, you can change the size a little bit by going into Selection, Modify, and I can expand or contract those, my selection. So if I wanted to expand it out two pixels, so I went Select, Modify, Expand, two pixels, and it kind of goes out. Mm -hmm. a little bit, and that might be too much, so maybe... Z in that. But yeah, that is about as good as we're going to get it. Um, and that's when we start getting into the pen tool, you can get really exact selections. But for what we're doing here, this would work. What I would do next is to um, zoom out then once I'm comfortable with my selection here. And let's just say accidentally I, I like this and I click and I lose my selection, I could always go to select, reselect. Huh. And it will do my last selection. Okay. I could do there, or I could also go back to my history that we were talking about before, um, and, and maybe go back a couple of steps if I had to, to find where I was, if I did two clicks accidentally. But if you just hit selection and, and you and you lost it for a second, that's the first way I would go is to select, reselect. Um, so from here, what I would do is to zoom zoom out. Um, I can hit the Z key again. Do that scrolling zoom. So now that that's selected. What the book asks us to do it wants to brighten up the highlights of the car and leave that area alone. So the way Photoshop works is whatever's selected um, 
that's the area that's going to be affected by your different tools and your different um, color enhancements or whatever you're going to do, um, filters and different things. It's going to only work within the selected area. So, for example, if I wanted to paint, my paint isn't showing up on my image until I paint it inside of that selection, and then it will show up because it's only going to do it in the selected area. So what they want us to do is um, to select the inverse of this and make the adjustment on everything except the headlight. So we're going to go to select inverse. And by doing that, we see that the, the edges have been selected. It looks like the headlight's do, still selected, but what is actually selected is everything but the headlight. They uh -huh. inversed it out. Then the other thing they're showing is introducing us to the adjustment layer. So once we've, we've picked that area um, um, here, we want to go to our adjustment layers, and they're going to introduce us. There's different ones. There's brightness and contrast. Um, this is the... Um, levels we're going to use the curves adjustment uh, um, exposure vibrance of the colors we can uh, use saturation color balance so you have different adjustment layers that um, come to fault with it but we're going to use the curves adjustment and if we just click that it created a new layer above our existing layer and with that, whatever you do on the adjustment layer, it will affect the layers below it. And in the book, um, they did mention bringing this, opening this up so we can see our input output values. And um, we want to just change the, the value. One way to do it is to take this from the top and slide it over. I think they wanted to go 204 in the book. So I could go there and slide that over. I could always just type it in too. So there's multiple ways of doing it. But if I uh -huh. type in 204 and I have my output 255. So that's what the book was asking. What I was hoping if I had more students here and I have you here is just experiment and see what the differences are. So this is one way to do it. You know, you could blow it out really far. You could um, go there. Um, so you don't have to necessarily go to 204, then you've just made it where you maybe a little bit lighter. Would that be all right? Or? Yes, that would be fine. And that's what I would like you to do, just to do what you visually think works well. And because what, what I see that you, you did change it and that the headlight's the same, I have a way I can look at your files and compare them to mine and, and you know just see what the difference is. So, um, okay. Yeah, I, I'd rather you experiment and see how it goes. <laughs> so that's one way of doing the curves. Um, by pulling that, and with that, to change, to see how this, I'm gonna just shut the door. I got my my grandkids came over tonight. Oh. <laughs> um, so with this, I want to um, see how that looks. If I turn this eyeball, this shows what layers are visible and which aren't. So my adjustment layer, if I turn that off and turn it on, now I can see what my adjustment layer is doing. Oh yeah, okay. So it's a way to, of comparing, and that's why it works nice with adjustment layer because I'm really not affecting these pixels of that image. I'm doing it on this layer above, and that's a neat feature of Photoshop that came in the, the later, I think it was CS5. I'm not sure if CS4 had it, but. Um, if you made another adjustment, would that go into that same layer, or would that make another new layer? Uh, you could make another adjustment, and say you wanted to change the... Um, the hue and saturation, you could make a new adjustment layer and it will oh, affect. Um, yeah, that goes a different layer. Okay. Yeah. So then you can see which ones you want to change. And if you turn that off, then you have that. So you can see how it. So you can have multiple adjustment layers and they're, they're affecting. Whatever layers are now, if I had another layer here, it will affect the layers underneath it. Um, 
Yeah, that's kind of where I was going to go as far as the next two parts of the, of this is working with type and arranging the type. Um, it's just paying attention to when you you choose the, the toolbars. Um, so if I do pick the type tool and I want to type something, I'll click on here. It's thinking, thinking. And, uh, I made it a text layer um, up top here is where I can uh, adjust the type. I could scroll it. I could type in whatever point I want here. Or I could um, pick from the drop down menu. And then you could pick your different fonts up there. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, so that's going into the next one, the pitch in one. And then uh, the next one, the tie one, which shows working with the, the brush tool where you get choices of different size brushes. You can change the size of your brush in here. Mm -hmm. So this is our, our tool option toolbar up, up top here. Um, just click outside there. Yeah, that's pretty much what I was going to go over tonight. Did you have any questions? Uh, no, that, that seems pretty clear. Okay. Um, if anything comes up, I appreciate you stopping by. <laughs> we'll see you know, how it goes next week. I'll, I will do it at the same time. I'll send out an email again just to remind everybody and, and resend that link again. So, and again, it's not mandatory. Okay, yeah. Uh We'll probably see how it goes next week. If I'm having any questions or something, I'll be at the meeting. And if not, and I might not be. I had one class I took, and uh, me and another guy were the only ones that showed up, and uh, we were the only ones that knew what was going on. And he goes, oh, that's great. I got the whole class doesn't know what's going on, and they, they're the ones that don't show up, and the ones that two guys that know what's going on are here. <laughs> yeah, it's usually like that. You know, you're the ones that are paying attention, and they wonder why they don't know what's going on. <laughs> um yeah if you have any questions you know you can get to email or um the voicemail works fine um it comes right to my email so whatever works for you okay that sounds good all right well it, uh thanks for the instruction and uh we'll uh talk to you uh sometime later on soon i guess uh, somewhere along the way okay patrick we'll, we'll talk okay, to you later. Tom. okay all right see ya bye